<laughs> hello, hello, hello there. How are you today? I hope all is well with you. Hello, 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 my wonderful gardening friends. My name is Catherine, and welcome to Catherine's Garden and Home, where we grow, 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 grow together. That's right, that's what we do here. We grow together here at Catherine's Garden and Home. It's so good to be with you today. I hope that you've had a really great day. And I have been naming my days. <clears throat> so I've named today as Wonderful, Wonderful Wednesday. Wonderful Wednesday. And I think it's, it's, it's a good thing to be able to uh, name your days because it helps you to empower yourself and you're um, you're starting off the day in, in a positive mode by calling it what you want it to be and I found that that has really been helpful in shaping my attitude about the day and so today I wanted to go out to get some um, pesticides or some fungicides and um, some all season I'll show it to you yeah I saw Laura of Garden Answer that she was um, spraying her fruit trees and I have a number of fruit trees in my yard my garden that I planted and um, for the last couple of years I have not sprayed them but I found that some of my plants some of my trees have been um, susceptible to different um, bugs like aphids and last year my plum trees uh, did not fruit they blossomed they were beautiful and there were a potential the potential of getting some really big and large beautiful plums. The whole tree was filled with plums on it. But um, the aphids came and just decimated the crop. And I didn't even have one plum on one particular plum tree, my purple plum tree, uh, that I expected to have. And then the other plum tree, I only had two. My peaches came and they blossomed. They were healthy and nice. The next thing you know it, I noticed that the worms were eating them. And the apple tree, the same thing um, happened to the apple tree and the pears. So I said, not this year. I'm going to follow Laura of Garden Answers uh, lead, and I'm going to buy this stuff. It's all season horticultural dormancy spray oil and also uh, the copper fungicide. They didn't have it in the small liquid, but they had it in this form. Hello, who's there? Hello, Deborah. Hello, Sonia. How are you all doing? I hope you're fine. So glad to have you come and join me. And so that is the topic for today. The best fruit trees. What are the best fruit trees uh, for your backyard garden What are the best fruit trees for thank you Sonia? You're on the ball. Yes, you are. Thank you so much <laughs> um, The best fruit trees for your gardens and uh, I, I Got a list here. It was a really great article here from Home and garden I think it's home and garden yeah, homesandgardens.com, and they they listed the 10 best fruit trees, especially for beginners, and what we can grow either in the ground or in containers. And uh, so I'm excited about this topic. Also, the idea of, as I said, spraying. Um, and then I got this art, this magazine. They're, they're coming fast and furious. Young Seed and Plants, family owned, operated for its year, uh, or for 115 years. I got this magazine um, catalog that came in this week, and it had all of the different 
fruit treats here. It has a whole selection of fruit treats. Now, the others that I have, the other catalogs really don't um, advertise fruit trees, but this one does. And today I went to um, Home Depot and I also went to Lowe's and I went to Ocean Job Lot. Home Depot, they had fruit trees lined up there and they are really getting ready for the spring season. They had um, the berries and they had the other things. I got that catalog today. You did, Deborah? Yeah, and they have those, um, their fruit trees already out. And uh, I started to videotape it, you know, I was so excited and everything. And my phone, I don't know, for some reason, I guess it's full. I have to clean it out. But I, I want it to be focused and make sure that I get the oils because I know that if one place didn't have it, that I would have to travel and go to the other stores. So I was really focused, intentional about getting the um, the the dormancy spray oil at at um, at Home Depot. They didn't have this one, the uh, all season. But what they had was the neem oil. I went to Home Depot today, and yes, they are stocked up. Yes, they are. <laughs> They had neem oil. The lady suggested I get neem oil um, because they didn't have that other. So I did buy the neem oil because of the fact that it says uh, multi-purpose fungicide, insecticide, miticide, three-in-one product, kills eggs, larvae, and adult stages of insects, prevents fungal attack of plant tissues for organic gardening. So I got this because I do have... Um, some of my plants that would get uh, like my lilies and so forth those bugs the beetles and the smudge spider mites and so forth controls black spot powdery mildew rust spider mites aphids white flies and other insect pests for use on roses flowers house plants ornamental trees shrubs fruits nuts and vegetables so i thought that this would be good to have too so i got the neem oil as well so I am prepared to tackle all garden um, pests of that nature. Um, one thing I did find that with the plum tree weir, there were a lot of um, aphids that the um, ladybugs came. The ladybugs actually came and, and um, started eating the aphids. So, in a sense, it brought in other beneficial insects, which helped to devour um, those. So, it's, it's kind of yes and no with the fun fungicide and the pesticide and all of that. And, of course, I don't want to have anything that is not organic and, uh, or that would um, hinder or kill the um, beneficial insects like bees and and butterflies and, and, and those types of, um, of, of insects. So that's something to consider also. So that's one of the things that I wanted to talk about today. But then also the types of trees. And if you have room in your backyard, are you growing any? Are you growing them in ground? Or are you growing fruit trees in containers? Because I know a lot of you are container gardeners that you tend to um, grow your fruit trees in containers. And that's, that's a good thing also, to grow the fruit trees in containers. Um, and then they have different types of fruit trees and apple trees and so forth. And uh, that is some of the things that we want to think about too as well. Disease resistant. So, so how are you all doing? How's everything? Are you all well? Uh, you know, it is snowing right now here in the Boston area. It is snowing outside. Um, and it's going to be, it's, it's amazing because it was just uh, in the 50s. And now we have snow, um, snow outside. It's like, really? Why is it snowing? <laughs> You're great, Sonia. That's good. That's good. That's good. 
Have you bought anything? You uh, have you bought any plants or anything, or are you working on your garden, uh, Deborah, or any one of you who are there, Deborah or Sonia? Are you working on your garden? And if so, um, how far have you come along with it? Um, I also, you know, while I was there, I went to Ocean Job Lot. I got another pot um, uh, that a big, big size pot. I got another pot, a ceramic pot, that is really nice. And I'm going to put that out in the garden. I got, I got that. And then, you know, that they had those 40% off seeds, uh, the burpee seeds. I'm good. It was raining with a cold wind. I'm glad it stopped. So that's good. That's good. But you know, the rain is good. Oh, by the way, my daffodils and tulips are coming up. I have five fruit trees, two in pots and three in the ground. Oh, that's great. That's great. Um, and how are they growing? Are they, what, what, are, what, which ones do you have and how are they growing? Are they big or are they just, um, are they still young trees, Sonia? Um, and, uh, yeah, hello, Gee Mama Gross. <laughs> how are you? You know, it wouldn't be the same without you. I'm so glad you came on. I have four new trees. Oh, yeah? <laughs> That's good, Sonia. So they're still young, but they're a good investment. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's so good to, to have you all here with me. Um, you know, I, I went to the Ocean Job Lot, and they had those burpee seeds still there, 40% um, off. I started loofah plants and more beans. I'm going to I'm going to grow a lot of beans. Oh yeah, I've started my, my, um, I've started my straight eight cucumbers. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, you've been busy, Deborah. Deborah, what 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 zone are you in? What zone is what what zone are you in? Because uh, it seems like you can grow, um, you can grow things that we can't grow here very early. It seems like you're able to grow early, earlier than the rest of us, or at least for me, I'm in zone um, six. So it seems like you're, you're in a cooler, in a warmer zone. Um, is it, are you, Deborah, are you in zone eight or zone seven? Which zone are you in? Because you're, you, you're able to grow a lot of good stuff, like the loofah and the beans and, and a lot of other things. And cucumbers. For me, cucumbers, I have to wait before I, buy, I um, grow cucumbers. Hello, Cassie. Hey, Miss Catherine and Ham. How you doing, Cassie? I'm in zone 8A. Okay. Hampton Roads, Virginia. I'm starting them inside. Okay. All right, all right. Yeah, but still, it's warmer than mine. I mean, zone eight is is a much more. You have a longer growing season, I would think, than I do, which is really good. You get to grow some um, really nice plants, um, and that that you have a long growing season, so you can start earlier and 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 go longer than the rest of us that are in like zone six and zone five. All right, so I went to um, Ocean Jobs. I just wanted to share. Yep. Hey, G Mama, Sonia, yes. Cassie is in the house. <laughs> so is G Mama. That's so good. That's so good. Um, I went and I got some okra. Yes. I went back and I said, you know, I'm missing some other plants that I wanted to get. So I got my Clemson spineless okra. And last time I bought my okra from, um, what is that? Um, the Creek. That other, that other catalog, it never came in. What is it called? Anyway, but I got, I got my seeds, so I'm all set. I got the okra seeds. And then I ended up getting this fancy kind of okra. It's called Baby Boomba Hybrid Okra. 
I just started some dwarf okra. You did? I guess this is like a dwarf okra. It's a full size pods, best one, three to four long. Baker's Creek. Thank you. I couldn't remember what it is. You gotta excuse me, I'm a little tired today. <laughs> Thank you, Sonia. You're so good. You're so good to me. Oh goodness. Yeah, so okra baby um baby bomba hybrid. Have any of you grown this kind before? It says hefty. Full size pods, best one three to four inches long. Dwarf plants are ideal for containers. So this is going to be interesting. One of my favorite crops to grow. Yes, Cassie, they taste delicious. You know, I'm. You know, we're used to buying um, frozen okra uh, because you know my parents are from the West Indies and my husband is also from the West Indies. So they they make what they call fungi where they use okra and cornmeal together. Yeah, okay, that's new. Okay, and, um, and so I'm used to having frozen okra. And, you know, it's a little slimy and everything, and it's in the package. But I've never really eaten raw okra. And I actually tasted the, the um, Clemson spineless okra in my garden and I enjoyed it raw. Just eating it raw, just like that. I just picked it and ate it as I was walking through the garden. And it tasted so good. I, I actually enjoyed it. And it wasn't really a slimy either. It just tasted really, really good. So I am hooked on okra myself. I'm I'm hooked on, on growing it. And then of course it has that beautiful flower um, that reminds me of the hibiscus flower. Uh, so I like that. I like the flower, the the ornamental part of it. And this this one seems like it's kind of be kind of ornamental. So you're having problems getting it to germinate. Um, I, you know what I did? I I actually direct sowed it. Also, I did put some in my um, little greenhouse too. I waited till the see it, they need warm weather. They really need warm weather. So I think that trying to grow it, it you'll have to grow it indoors or, um, or wait until the, the weather gets warm. Um, and so that, that's, that's the good thing about that. And then the other thing that I got too was amaranth, Love Lies Bleeding. So this is a different one compared to the one, that expensive one that I bought from Johnny's Seeds last time. <laughs> this one is the old-fashioned traditional one. Yeah, wait until the weather warms up a bit. I think you'll do fine. I'm trying to find a variety that I can enjoy raw, too. I also have the Star of David okra, but haven't grown it yet. Oh, okay. All right, well, that one works. And then they have this a purple one, also, that I got from Baker Creek um, two years ago. And... It was, it's very pretty. It looks nice and it matches my coloring in my garden. But I seem to enjoy, I, I do enjoy the, um, the Clemson Spineless a lot more. You tried the dwarf versions last year, uh, Cassie? Yeah. Um, but, um, and then my amaranth. So this amaranth, this is what I know of uh, Lo Love Lies Bleeding. And uh, I happened to see it, so I got this one also. So I'm going to have two different types. Luscious Journey, hello, everyone. So good to have you. Yes, come and join us. So good to have you here with us. Yeah, and so, um, so I have this, the amaranth here. And um, I hope that all is well with you all. Yes. Kuyomi. Cleomi, I love Cleomi in the garden. And uh, they happen to have this seed, Cleomi. Queen's mixed colors. Um, this is kind of hard for me to grow sometimes um, from seed. And I usually would pick it up from my garden friend that I buy my garden starts with. Uh, but she's decided uh, last year because of the COVID situation and so forth, she was only growing vegetables. She wasn't growing any uh, annuals or um, any perennial starts. So I decided um, that I would give it a try. And this I'm going to do 
in pots. I'm going to seed these out and uh, create little plants. So hopefully it'll grow. Welcome, um, League Journey. Oh, no. I think you... Yeah. Lashes. Lashes Journey. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so good to have you. Um, and I got cabbage seeds too. Early or um earlyena earlyena I got cabbage usually I buy the cabbage starts but this year I decided I'm going to do the cabbage um in the bottle so I got some some seed starting soil and I'm going to do this one in as uh, winter sowing because I still have to try that. I still have to do that. You know I was using that alternative soil. And that is an experiment. But for the cabbage, I'm going to see if... I'm trying zinnias as a new flower for my front yard. Oh, you're going to love zinnias. Zinnias are so easy to grow. Um, you just uh, clear the space. Wait till the weather gets warm. And direct seed them in the ground. And they will grow. Uh, they, they, especially if the soil is warm and it's a nice sunny spot and you give them a lot of water, they grow so easily. Um, I just, I just enjoyed zinnias. I've fallen in love with zinnias. And my front garden, you know, the part that I call my urban cottage garden area, the zinnias, the cosmos, they grow well. The marigolds, yeah, it's just really, they love that heat hot um, by the um, asphalt side of the garden over there. They love that area. I tried to do the zinnias in the back. Actually, did the, the zinnias. Yeah, you're going to love the zinnias in the back. And um, they didn't get as much sun. They looked good, but they need the sun. They need the sun and the heat. And um, it was like part shaded over there. So they grew, but not as, um, as full and lush as the ones at the front. Rachel, you're in the house. Good to have you, honey. Good to have you. Yay, Rachel's in the house. And uh, Brampton Gardner. And so, yeah, you're going to love the zinnias. You're going to love the zinnias. Um, and so... Um, yeah, so I was sharing, uh, Rachel, I don't know if you, you, you heard. I, I got some cabbage seeds, so I'm going to do the winter sowing with the cabbage seeds. And I got some, um, some seed starting soil, so I'm going to do that with the, the water jugs. And um, that, but you know what? It's snowing here. I wanted to show you it's snowing, but it's, it's kind of dark now. But it's really snowing heavy. It just started like an hour or two ago, and um, so what? it was looking so springy outside, and now it's like we're back into winter again. It's really snowing heavy. I think we're going to get like three or four um, inches. Oh, no, boo. I know, but, you know, it is what it is. But um, so I'm going to do the cabbage with the winter sowing, and I get got Cleome. I'm going to start, so I'm going to start this indoors, and the, the amaranth, the love lies bleeding, yes, 40% off burpee seeds, and okra, 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 <laughs> so that's that for seeds, and um, all right, so my wonderful people, it's cold here too, it is, where are you, Lash, uh, Lashes Journey, where are you, hi, Hey, hey, Sandria, a beautiful nest is with me. Oh, a beautiful nest home and garden. Hi, it's kind of so good to see you. So good to see you, Sandria. Yes, I know you love. Everyone say hello to Sandria. Uh, you, If you have not subscribed to her channel, she is, She. I am so honored. Last, um, last week, we had Lady Cheryl come and join us in the chat. And this week I got Sandria. Who, um, <laughs> and she is wonderful. It's warm here. 42, but dropping back to low 30s for a few days. Okay. But Sandria's here. Sandria, a beautiful, nice home and garden. Yeah, make sure that you uh, subscribe. She is like the... I, I, 
I love her artistry of her videos. I love her creativity. It just, it's just, it's, it's so beautiful. It's almost like she's doing cinematic. She's doing cinematic gardening. You know, it's like watching a, a, a movie in the garden with her chicks. <laughs> and her, with her, with her, not chicks, not chicks, hens. Her hens and her hen house. But Sandria, you inspired me because you talked about your fruit trees. Now, I've been watching you on my TV, so that's why I haven't commented. But I saw that you had pulled out your fruit trees out of your garage. And um, I also watched uh, Laura of Gardening Answer, and she had just sprayed her fruit trees. Yeah, her videos are like movies. Yes, they are, little movies. Um, and she sprayed her fruit trees that she had in the ground with the all-season uh, horticultural and dormancy spray oil and also the, um, the copper fungicide. And so I, I went out today. I, I had ordered it on. I so wish we could comment on the TV. I know, I know, because I watch a lot of you on the TV. <laughs> um, they, um, so I went to... I went to um, Home Depot, Lowe's, and we have what is called Ocean Job Lot, looking for the, um, the, the sprays because I ordered it on Amazon, and then, I don't know, something happened. They, they ended up telling me uh, that they've refunded me and they didn't send it, and it really messed up my schedule, so I said, I've got to get it. But it's snowing right now, so tomorrow and, or the next day, when the sun comes out, I'm going to be spraying my fruit trees because I have them in the ground for the last, what, two, three years? Um, and I think you were following me then. You were subscribed to me then when I put my apple trees and my, um, my pear tree. I put in a pear tree. I planted, I planted first a Asian pear tree. I think it was like three years ago now. I'll have to grab some of that as well. Uh, caring for my fruit trees is new to me. Yeah, if you watch, watch Garden Answer. Um, and she, Laura, she just planted an orchard. Yes, I have been watching you for a long time. Laura. Yeah, we've been watching each other for a long, long time. I think it's like three years now, right? So I planted my tree. It was an Asian pear tree that I'd gotten on, on sale at the local gardening store. Uh, gardening shop here and I was driving by and I happened to see all of these fruit trees now after watching Lady Cheryl who uh, has her food forest I said I want some fruit trees in my garden too I want a permaculture uh, food forest <laughs> so I bought the Asian pear and put it in and uh, it feared well the next day. I also had a peach tree that I had bought and I had placed in and I had gotten from uh, QVC. I think I bought it from QVC. But that one had taken so long to grow and um, it's now just starting to bear peaches. So the time has had gone by with that. Um, so then I ended up getting um, from them I went back and I ended up getting two plum trees, um, one a purple plum and one a golden uh, yellow, a golden egg plum. Oh, that plum is so delicious, so sweet. And then I went to uh, Lowe's and it was at the end of the season and Lowe's had apple trees. They called them urban apple trees on sale, um, half off. And so I bought two of them. And um, they have not bared yet. They're just there. I don't know. They're growing. They're getting bigger. But it's taking them a while. Yeah, they sell plants. Yeah, yeah. I don't, not as much as they used to before G Mama grows. But they're expensive. But then you could also buy it on easy pay. So you get to pay it off as you go along. So that's the, that's the only good thing about that. And so um, I am... Um, I ended up buying a pear tree and planted that pear tree in as well um, because I was able to catch the end of the year sales and I just put them in the garden. Well, uh, they've been bearing fruit. Last year, my pear tree, 
the yeah they do <laughs> oh i was hooked on qvc be, i have to say because as a principal and teach first teachers and principal and ex, you know working i didn't have time to go shopping at the end of the day i would come home like at seven o'clock at night and i didn't really have time to to shop so for me, it, it, home shopping was a pl time for me to relax, but also it's that that was one of the ways that I could get stuff. So don't get hooked. Don't get hooked. I'm not hooked now because now I can go wherever I want to go because I'm not, I'm not there anymore. Um, but the thing is, is that um, it was very highly easy pay plans take a lot of my money <laughs> yes uh, lemon plum sounds delicious yeah um yeah so the other thing is is that from from um qvc i had ordered it's amazing in my office i had a meyer lemon tree and i also had a um it was a variegated meyer lemon tree it was it was very well scented the leaves were uh, fresh smelling but it took a while um before it started to uh, bloom. And then I left there. Uh, here's cooking, uh, here cooking and listening. No problem, no carbon lashes journey. Uh, so that is, that is what I have in my garden. And then of course the fig tree, my fig trees, which I've been propagating. And don't worry, I haven't forgotten that when I prune my fig trees, um, later, you know, when the weather gets warm, yeah, those of you that I had promised to send you a, a fig tree, um, you know, start a stick, <laughs> a branch. <laughs> oh, we'll, we'll get it together. And then I have now three fig trees. The fig tree, the first fig tree that I got was from QVC. And um, it took a long time for it to, to settle and grow. Wow, Catherine, your orchard is going to be amazing. Keep adding those trees. Yeah, but the only problem is is location, location, location. Um, and that's a big part of it, too. And, and you were talking about that, too, Sandria. You were talking about location, that um, finding that, that sunny spot. And I, too, kind of put mine on the, the um, surrounding the garden, on the edges of the garden. Um, so many people growing fruit trees. Yeah, it's good. When I was a young child <laughs> growing up in my backyard, my parents' backyard, we, my parents bought a home that had a, um, a pear tree and it was a cooking pears. Um, it was a Jewish home and they grew plums. They had two plum trees in the back and they had planted a pear tree and that pear tree grew big and tall. Um, that the the boys in the neighborhood would jump the fence and come and raid our pear tree. And the pears were so delicious. Um, my brothers would climb the pear tree and shake the tree and down would come all, yeah, I'm running out of room in my yard. Yes, Cassie. Um, would come all the pears. And my mother would then gather the, have us gather the pears and she would peel them. We'd all help to peel the, the, the pears. And then she would make pear sauce, like a pear um, sauce. And then she'd kind of, she, she didn't can them, but we'd bottle them and put them in the fridge. And then over time, the pears, if we don't eat them right away, they would start to ferment and it would taste like a pear wine, like a liqueur. It was delicious, but it was great with ice cream. Then my mother, or we would gather the plums. They were like the prune plums, you know, the purple plums. They were delicious also. We'd, that, those, um, that tree was a little smaller, so we were able to climb the tree. I was able to climb the tree and pick fresh plums. So having fruit trees was something that I grew up with, especially with the pear and the plum. And then um, my mystery citrus is holding on to two fruits, green and round, looking so far. <laughs> that's good, that's good, that's good. <laughs> that's good that your, your fruit trees um, are, are doing well. I think, also, I think that growing fruit trees is more like, it's for longevity. 
Oh, nice, Nisi. Yes, yes. Um, it's 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 nice to um, grow fruit trees. Fruit trees are are, are a long-term thing, and it's like an investment, you know, investment in your um, in your garden. Um, so let me let me share with you what I gathered here. This information. Hello, everyone. I missed. I had to take a phone. No problem, De Deborah. Um, and yeah, it's so good to have you all here with me. You all are definitely my gardening friends, and um, it's it's good to have this wonderful community. You make me so happy. I look forward to our Wednesday gatherings. Yes, I do. We're here Wednesdays at 5 30 p.m eastern standard time and we have different topics and you guys just make me happy so continue to share your wonderful information with one another and let me just share this with you for right now <laughs> my first fruit tree is a fig i hope it grows it will grow it will grow deborah Yes, it will. And I enjoyed my figs. Well, you all know about my figs. Oh, really? Okay, I'll stop by more often. Yeah, yeah. Every Wednesday at 5.30, we come here uh, together, and we have a great time. This is a great bunch, Sandria. Yes, sorry. And Rachelle makes us laugh. She, she gets a good joke in every now and then. It just sets me right off into to laughter. So we laugh, and we talk, and we enjoy one another. Yes, this is a time for us to just sit back and just, you know, enjoy the moment. But I also like to share information. And so um, I looked at this article from Homes and Garden. It says, best fruit trees tend to grow in your backyard. So if you don't have this one, think about um, getting it. And I think all of these fruit trees, haha, I do my best. Yes, you do, Rachel. That's why I love when you come to our Because <laughs> you help us to just, you know, uh, laugh. We love it. From your lips to God's ears. <laughs> yes, Deborah, your fig tree is going to be just fine. It may take some time, but don't, you know, you got, one thing with the garden, you got to have patience, right? Mm -hmm. Patience is a virtue. Anyway, best fruit trees tend to grow in your backyard. And um, just see if you have these 10 in your backyard. Okay, I'm going to give you some background information. Hello, I'm lovely Dove23. Yes, you are lovely Dove23. How are you? So good to have you to come and join us here. Say hello to everyone. Yes, yeah, so grow your own backyard orchard with the best fruit trees from traditional favorites to more unusual varieties so choosing so this is it this is some background information choosing the best fruit trees to grow in your garden prioritize the fruits you most enjoy eating all right so first and foremost when you're going to select um the fruit tree that you want to add to your garden make sure that it is something that you really want to grow in your garden all right make sure that's something that you really want because it's an investment and you're gonna have to have the patience over time to care for it because you know it requires that you make sure that you water it yeah that you fertilize it and that you provide it what it needs you know pruning it tending it it's like a baby I bought my fig tree in what 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 whoops in, in, I, in something, I was scared. Now that I've got two varieties, I may try to keep keep one outside. Yeah, okay. You bought an H, what did you, bought a tree in the winter? You were scared? Okay. Wait till you grow asparagus, huh? <laughs> I am not growing asparagus. I see that to me, asparagus really is takes a long time to grow. But anyway, I hate um, bok choy and eggplants. I will not be planting again. Okay, Cassie G, hello there. Okay, anyway, let me get back to this because I want to share this information. 
Choosing the best fruit trees to grow in your garden. Prioritize the fruits you most enjoy eating. It doesn't make any sense to grow trees that you don't enjoy eating. Now, if you have figs and you don't have a fig tree and you don't enjoy eating the fig tree, then it doesn't make any sense to, to grow a fig tree. I bought a fig tree last year, so hopefully I'll get fruit this year. Um, you may, you may not, Sonia. It took me like three years before my fig tree really started to mature and to produce figs. It depends. If you put it in a container, um, it may grow of fruit from that. It, de it depends on the, the type. Brampton Gardener, I have some that I haven't found a long-term spot for them. Love figs. Yeah, me too. My figs were good last year. Anyway, choose the best fruit trees to grow in your garden. Prioritize the fruits you most enjoy eating. So, um, also, why grow fruit trees? Good, it's a good idea, and it is also rewarding. Uh, the other thing, tastes far superior to store fruit uh, fresher and can ripen on the tree. Have you, you know, there's such a difference between a fresh grown apple from like when i go apple picking from the apple orchard versus buying the apples that have been sitting around in the stores um it's 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 such a difference to be able to pick the apple from the tree and bite into it it's it's fresh it's it's rewarding um, eating my fresh figs, it just tastes so good. And the plums, you're able to have them ripen fully or close to ripen versus eating them, um, you know, um, early or, or not ripe. So that's one of the rewards of growing your own fig tree. It tastes far superior to store fruit and fresher and can ripen on the tree. You can grow different and rare varieties really seen at the rarely seen at the grocery store. And that's true. Variety in fruit trees. It's so good. Once it does though, Deborah, it's on and popping. <laughs> yes, it is. Are you talking about fig trees? That's the truth. When it's on, it's on. And mine have been on and I'm just like, whew, that was so good. It, it was worth the wait. You can grow different and rare varieties. Um, and so, like, for example, my Asian pear tree. I, I wasn't really familiar with Asian um, pear trees. Um, but when I got it and it had, like, it was, had different varieties grafted on it. Um, and when it first grew, they were very small, and I, I ate my fruit. Um, they said when you grow a, a, a young tree that for the first year you, you should um, take off the fruit and because you want the energy to go into the roots. Well, I didn't do that. I let the fruit grow. I wanted to see the fruit. Um, they were small, but they tasted so good. And I really loved the taste, and it seemed like the... Um, the more that I allowed it to, yeah, the more that I allowed it to um, to ripen on the tree, the more tasty it was. And it was very juicy, even though it was small. Um, so I, to me, that was an exotic, um, buying an Asian pear, because uh, I'd never seen them before. But it's, it's like a cross between an, a pear and sort of like an apple, I would say. Um, not really, but sort of, sort of like an apple. It's definitely pear, uh, but very good, very good. So if you'd grow your own tree, like for example, the Meyer lemon tree, um, the Meyer lemon was a variegated, my Meyer lemon tree that I gotten from QVC was a variegated Meyer lemon, and uh, that was really good. Yeah, R-O-F-L. What does ROFL mean, Sandria? I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, you're going to have to spell it out for me. Um, yeah, they're very crispy. Yes, yes. Uh, the, the Meyer lemon is so juicy. Um, and I wanted to really, it was just beautiful. Just a beautiful, um, just a beautiful tree. Um, and having fresh, I'm rolling on the floor laughing. You all are so funny. Yeah. Oh, oh okay. 
<laughs> well, we are funny. We have a good time here. That's why I like my group. We we just we just enjoy one another. <laughs> we just laugh and have fun. I mean, life is too serious. We you gotta relax a little bit. And growing, uh, growing, we grow, grow, grow together and laugh together. So it's a choose the best fruit trees to grow in your garden. Prior to his fruit. Okay, where am I now? Uh, um, you can grow different uh, different kinds of rare varieties really seen at the grocery store. And that is so true. Okay, then it was talking about the kitchen garden trees. And so you can decide how you want to grow your fruit trees. You don't just have to put them in the ground. You can dedicate an area and create an orchard. That's something like what um, uh, Sandra is going to do. She's creating like a little orchard area. And then you could espalier your your tree like those trees apple trees that i got from um from lowe's i'm going to welcome in gardens uh, I'm, I'm gonna who anyway i'm going to um as i started to try to oh gardens are made badly how are you my sweetheart you're in <laughs> i'm so busy talking i don't have time to see who is there it's a good thing the rest of you all recognize it. That's good. Anyway, um, yeah, gardens, bears in the house, Beverly, Beverly, Beverly's in the house. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So anyway, um, espalier. So you know that apple tree that I got from Lowe's. I decided to espalier it because of the way that it was structured. I think that's what it was supposed to be. I think that's, that's the type of apple tree it is. So I got some long poles and I kind of like stretched out the branches and hopefully that will create a way of it um, creating those apple spikes or whatever so that I can grow apples. So we'll see what happens, what comes out, out of it if it works. But I do love the idea of the espalier tree. Um, and there's another, there's a guy that I like to watch, Mike Kincaid. Mike Kincaid, he does a lot of pop propagation. And he has an apple orchard and a pear orchard. And he, he set up poles or stakes and he, he espaliered his, um, his his pear trees and his apple trees and they really produce um, yeah yeah it's a great idea check him out mike mike kincaid um and he has uh, if you put in apple trees or whatever when he was putting them in it just looked so good and he okay i love mike kincaid yes mike kincaid is really good and he's good with propagation um, he's, he's been into fig trees now lately. He's just really into fig trees and he likes to propagate hydrangeas and things like that. Did you see when he peed on his zucchini? No, I didn't see that. <laughs> I missed that one. Thank God. Anyway, um, but, um, yeah, so you can grow, is it the same Mike Kincaid? I think it's, I think it's K-I-N, K, Kincaid, K I N. C A C A I D is Kincaid. Let me see. I can see. Mike uh, Kincaid. I didn't see him do that. I think you spelled it wrong. Um, it's K I N C A I D, and he has on. Um, he has about uh, cuttings and so forth. He does a lot of figs and fig cuttings. My Kincaid. Yeah. Anyway, and he talks about fruit, fruit trees. And apple trees. This is what he looks like. Let me see if I can turn my thing so you can see. Th that's him right there. My Kincaid. <laughs> no, I am not looking up that. I'm talking about fruit trees, Rachel. Stick to the topic. 
Anyway, um, yeah, I may I may start a fruit tree grove in my backyard. I have the room for it. Yeah, you, I think it's a great idea. And for your children, your grandchildren, um, your children, they, they'll be able to pick the trees. They pick the fruit from grandma's trees, fruit trees. Um, that's the same thing with uh, Lady Cheryl. She has uh, her two grandbabies. And I remember she's talking about her apple tree and how she was really holding on. Ha-ha, it was just good fertilizer. ha I know. But we're not talking about that, okay? Yeah, oh, so um, she, she had her apple tree, and uh, she had two apples on it. And I guess there was a bird or something trying to, it takes two different varieties of apples or pears for pollination of fruit. Yeah, for some of the apples, like my particular apple tree that I have, it ha it's a multi-grafted tree. So I have on it, it has, um, it, it, it's self-pollinating. Self That's the topic I want, wanted to get to, too. So you all are ahead of the game here. Um, but yes, there you you have to with apple trees. You need to have at least two or three different varieties around so it can pollinate. Or if you have a crab apple tree close by in the neighborhood, that will also help to pollinate your apple tree as well. Um, but yeah, if you're buying, um, or you can do like what I did. I got uh, from my nursery. They had um, the grafted. They had um, the grafted ones. Yeah, she, she's jumping ahead, gee mama. Okay, but anyway, I wanted to talk about um, yeah, um, the kitchen garden trees. Dedicated orchard, you could have espalier on the fences, fanned across the wall. So if you have a wall, you can fan your fruit tree across the wall. And the person who does that is um, Monty Don. Do you watch Monty Don? Um, Garden, gardener's world yeah he has uh, that sort of idea of the expaliated or against the, the wall f um, fruit tree and in England that they did a lot of that uh, when with the growing of fruit trees against the wall in their kitchen garden Monty Don mm -hmm, gardener's world love him love that show um, and then or you can grow in containers and I know a lot of you grow your fruit trees in containers that's a really good thing um, and if you you don't have the space that doesn't mean that you can't have a fruit tree you just have to get a dwarf fruit trees dwarf fruit trees and uh, make sure that you provide the um, fertilizer and the things that it needs so that it can grow healthy but yeah um, so growing in containers but growing the dwarf fruit trees um, and then planting amongst ornamentals. And that's what I do. My, my fruit area, where I have my little fruit area, I have um, around it, around them, I should say, my flowers and other things growing underneath them. And it just looks really pretty, especially in the spring when you have the daffodils on the ground. And then you have the pear trees blooming. The pear trees are wonderful in spring. Is the chat frozen? No. The chat is frozen? I don't know. If I grow them in containers, I can move them around when I have family gatherings. Yeah, that's true. Uh, growing them in containers, you're able to... The, the chat shouldn't be frozen because you all are here. No, the chat is here. Yeah, that's good. Um, you should be able to uh, move them around. So planting your, your plants um, in pots is a good thing as well, right? Because your figs grow in pots, apples, pears, peaches, all of them grow in the pots. But you have to make sure that your pots are large enough and that you have a, a dwarf plant. Um, I remember Laura had grown a peach tree in a, a dwarf peach tree in a pot, a garden pot. It, had, but it was a good size. And so she was talking about um, transplanting it, but she got a lot of peaches from them. So the downside is that this is the downside about um, 
homegrown fruit. The homegrown fruit won't look as perfect as store-bought. So when you are planting your own fruits, you have to realize that the, the fruit is not going to look as pretty, okay? But it's going to taste sweet and delicious. It may not look, you know, like how the store-bought one looks, but they're just fake. You want the real taste. You want the goodness. So grow your own. <laughs> the question. All right, so there was a question I wanted to ask. Do you use pesticides and fungicides on your fruit trees? Well, yeah, anyone knows what size pot to use for trees? Well, you need a big size. The larger, the better. The, like the whiskey barrel size is really good, as long as it tastes good. Yes, exactly, Sonia. <laughs> yes, and especially if you're going to grow apples, right, and you make it, that delicious apple pie, nobody's going to see the apple because you're cooking it. Like, especially the cooking, they are just fake. That's right, Sonia, <laughs> Sandia. They're just fake. You want the taste. You want the quality. You want the nutritional value. Uh, you want the freshness. Oh, I love going to... Except, you know, like the orchard over at the orchard, the, the Honey Pot Hill apple orchard that I would go to with my daughter every, um, every fall, their apples look so beautiful. Oh, my goodness. But it's an orchard, and they care for it. And I believe they use some form of um, pesticide or, or fungicide. But this is what Laura suggested and this is what she's using on her um, fruit tree. And uh, I was so happy to get this. I tried to order this from Amazon. I ordered it. It was supposed to come since Sunday. And then the next thing I noticed that it didn't show up, I went to check and they refunded me. I don't know what happened. So I went hustling around today to find this because it. what it does is the all seasons horticultural and dormancy spray oil needs to be a sprayed now while everything is dormant. You know, it's actually, she said, uh, late February, early March. Well, we're still in the early March, so I think I, I'm good. Plus, it was snowing outside, so um, I'm not going to have any um, anything coming out of dormancy right now. So what it does is the horticultural and dormancy spray oil, it controls insects and diseases. And... Um, it's uh, used year round. It's good for scales, eggs, spider mites, kills insects by smothering. And it's organic for organic um, gardening. So this is something that you may have to consider. I had to get a spray pot because my trees, some of my trees, like my plum trees are pretty tall and trying to hand spray, you know, I didn't get, they didn't have the, the um, concentrate in this this is the other one that she suggests to spray now the copper fungicide dormant and growing season liquid copper fungicide used for early and late blight on tomatoes and potatoes oh if you buy at a nursery ask them what size pot yeah that's true um that's good rachel thank you for putting that in Okay, and then here, um, for a wide range of listed plant disease, powdery mildew, this is good for powdery mildew, rust, black spot, leaf or fruit spot, downy mildew, fruit rot, and late blight. So this is good. This would be good even for planting. If you, like your roses get black spot, um, uh, downy mildew, fruit rot, and, and uh, late blight. This is hydroponic gardening. It's good for hydroponic gardening too. So I got this. I got this one from uh, Home Depot. This They sold this at Home Depot. But yeah, so I'm going to mix the two together and either tomorrow or the next day I'm going to use it. Yes, that's a good one. I use that also. You do? I'm Lovely Dove 23 that's good. That's good. Thank you for that confirmation. Um, yeah, if you use it, put it, let, let me know. Great. I have a five gallon to start my fig in. Oh, that's wonderful, Deborah. Your fig's going to do well. 
um, all season hydroco um, um, horticultural and dormancy spray oil is a self emulsifying spray oil composed of a lot of good stuff. Okay. Control scale insects, mealybugs, apple aphids, European red spider mites, leaf miners, leaf rollers, powdery mildew rust, and other insects and disease listed. So this is good to have. I'm so glad that I was able to get it. You don't know how happy I was. Um, because this year I really want to make sure that I um, have fruit. So that was the question. That was one of the questions I wanted to ask you all. Do you use pesticides and fungicides on your fruit trees? Um, so that's good. All right, so uh, choose tree varieties suited for your area. Now, that's a good point. Now, if you are buying fruit trees, make sure that you buy fruit trees that are suited for your area. If you're living in Florida, you need a different type of fruit tree. They have fruit trees for your area. Whereas if you're in the Northeast where I am, um, you know, like citrus fruits, it's, it's, you're going to have to bring them indoors. Um, and then there are certain trees that grow well here. And make sure that you, you consider the hardiness zone and the soil type, because that's another thing. Like Sandria has that Georgia clay, uh, so she has to really amend her soil for her fruit trees and, and do all that she has to do. Whereas here we have pretty decent soil up here, up north where I am. And so I... Um, I'm able to amend. Now, you guys, I don't, nobody's mentioned about the likes. Do you like this topic? If you like this topic and you haven't liked, come on, hit the like button. Oh, I have a lemon and a lime tree that may not have survived the winter. That's right. They're not going to survive the winter outside. I mix my own con concoctions for my pests since I can't do them chemicals. Okay. Yeah, that's good. That's very good. Well, you need to share those recipes with us. Beautiful like. Yes. Come on, like people. Like, like, like if you like the topic. Come on, you got to help me. I am trying to uh, get to 2,000 subscribers. And I'm not too far away from there. I think I need like 100 and, and so more. So um, the more likes and comments. And thank you guys for commenting on my last video. That's wonderful, because the more that you all comment and like and so forth, then it gets around and more people find us, because you're part of me here on Wednesday, and they become a part of this whole experience, right? So it's time for me to grow. Grow, 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 grow this channel. <laughs> I've been doing this for a while. Time to push, push the growth. So make sure that you like and subscribe and also comment down below so that the algorithm can kick in. I'll greatly appreciate it. You know I do. I don't ask much of you all except to come and let's have a good time together. So let's invite more people to come and join us. I'm new to your channel. I love this topic. I hit the like button. Thank you, Petrie Gardening. Welcome. Good to have you. Welcome to all of those who are just listening. I love you, Captain. What'd you say? Awesome. What do you use? What did you say? I love you, Captain. I have to go, friends. See you all later. I'll check out your y'all's channel and see what you all are up to. Happy gardening, everyone. I'll shout you out, Catherine. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're gonna be ending soon too. But I am so honored to have you here too, Sandria. Thank you so much for um, coming and joining and visiting with us here at Catherine's Garden and Home, where we grow, 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 grow together. Catherine's got Oh, G. Junior grows in Alaska. Black's Tropical sent me. Oh, that's so nice. I love Cherie. That's nice. Welcome. Hi, Petrie. Welcome in. Hello. Nino and Lou. Woo! How are you, my Wendy's? Wonderfuls. I love Nina and Lou. Yay. Hi, Black Chuckle Homestead. Woohoo! Oh, these are my people. All right. Glad to have you all. 
Oh, wow. Grows in Alaska. Oh, man. They come in the house. Yay. Hello, all. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. So nice to have you all. I feel so honored today. The, the Hoodstead. Hello, I'm here from Black's Tropical. So nice to have you. Good to have you all. Sheree, this is your topic anyway, about trees and growing things. Yes, hello, Sonia. Yes, thank you so much for coming and visiting. Yeah, we have a lot of fun here. We um, laugh and we, we talk and share good information and enjoy one another. And people just have their own little conversations in the chat. And I try to keep up with them, keep this live going today. <laughs> so thank you all so much. Thank you all for coming. Make sure that you hit the like button. Hit the like button. Yeah, I'm trying to grow. I need to get to 2,000 subscribers. It's time for me to, to push this thing a little bit further. So thank you so much for coming. Yes, Nina, Nino and Lou, I love you all. I loved the, the time where you went and you shared food with your soup uh, um, for family day. I was just so touched by it. Um, that is community, and I really honor you for that. I thank you so much for showing that. That was so wonderful. My Renaissance grandma, how are you? Hello, soul brothers and soul sisters. Yay. Hello, Hoodstead. Yes. So good to have you all. Hello, everyone. <laughs> so we're talking about fruit trees. All right. So I wanted to just also let you know. I, I just want you to know here, Soil Family, Blacks, Tropical Homestead. Yes, Soil, soil Families. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I just wanted to share with you here that uh, choose tree varieties suited for your area. Uh, oh, thank you so much. You're welcome. Howdy, Blacks, Tropical Homestead. Hi, Sheree. Yeah. Um, Choose tree varieties suited for your area. Everyone should grow some form of fruit tree in their yard. You need to. I think it's just really great because it um, it talks of the future and it talks of longevity, right? And uh, it is so rewarding to be able to then pick your own fresh fruit from your garden. And it's fresh, nutritious. You know where it's come from, where it has come from, in your backyard, and you've had a hand in it. Um, as I said, I grew up here in the New England area. Crab apples, they're good. Yeah, uh, it, it's really, hello, Audrey Willis. Simplifying with Ebony, how are you? Yes, I'll be here in zone six. Thank you. <laughs> we have fruit trees. Yes, I know you do, Cherie. You have fruit trees and you have banana trees at that, which is so beautiful. Thank you so much for you all coming over. I really appreciate it. And uh, thank you for subbing zone 4A here. Woo, in Alaska. Wow. That is great. Mm-hmm. 4A. Woo. It's chilly up there. Mm. That's good. That's good. But I'm glad you're able to grow. 5B. Yes. You're 5B. You're very close to it, Rachel. So you can relate. <laughs> Getting more fruit trees in the middle of April. Yes. I'm in zone B. Growing lemons, avocado, and mangoes indoors. Wow. You can grow mangoes indoors? That's very nice. Yeah. I know I grew an avocado tree, but I didn't get, gain an avocado. My neighbor across the street, he his, he's on a double-decker, and on his veranda porch, he grew a avocado tree and had a little avocado come. I think it's because he's higher up and it's hot up, you know, it's warmer there, so he was able to grow an avocado in a pot. Yeah, so that's a good thing. Simplify with Ebony. Welcome, welcome. So choose tree variety suited for your area, okay? Ask your local, local uh, county extension for information 
about what trees grow best in your area. And your local garden centers also can inform you on selecting the best fruit trees for your area. And to consider the hardiness zone, the soil type, because like if you're growing in uh, the, the, um, Calif the, the Georgia clay versus up here in more loamy soil in the Northeast, or if your soil is sandy or dry, if you require water, the water requirements, think about all of that. Essential Gardens, how are you? So welcome, welcome to Catherine's Garden and Home, where we grow, 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 grow together. Yes, and so um, you wanna consider the, the soil type, the hardiness zone, buy fruit trees that can withstand your temperatures, right? So consider your temperatures. Um, so buy uh, those that um, that that can that can adapt to your zone because you don't want to buy a fruit tree and then have it die on you. So for example, like the lemons and the citrus up here up north, definitely you have to have either a greenhouse or some way of protecting it, bringing it indoors so that it can survive the winter. Um, but having it outside, you're going to be dis you're going to be disappointed because it can't s withstand the cold weather. Sorry, I'm misspelling, typing, and listening at work. No problem. Just great to have you, Cassie. <laughs> um, so the other thing is buy fruit trees that um, that may you that can grow in pots. So if you're buying a fruit tree to put in a pot. Make sure that it's a dwarf tree so that it can grow in that pot, that it won't, um, you know, want to outgrow the pot, per se. Um, so dwarf trees are for container gardening more, more so than anything else. Um, also, the cross-pollination. We talked about cross-pollination as well. That is very important. Okay, so here we go. The best fruit trees that tend to grow in your backyard. Are you ready? And uh, you can check it off and let me know if you have that tree in your yard. Are you ready? So the best fruit trees to grow. One, number one for beginners, apple trees. How many people have apple trees in their backyards? How many people are growing an apple tree? Just put it in the chat. Um, and apple trees are good for dessert trees for desserts and for cookers they're dessert trees and they're cookers if you yep yeah. hello tammy how are you if you have an apple tree say yes for apple trees i have two apple trees i have one apple tree oh good good for you love apple trees all right the second one are you ready for number two fig trees how many people have fig trees in their yards raise a hand let me know. Hey, Chloe, how are you? Glory, Glory, how are you? I have three apple trees here. That's good. That's good. And um, how many of you? Hey, Lynette, how are you? Lynette Lawrence. Yeah, how many people have fig trees in their yards? Fig trees. They have the brown turkey. They have the Benson Hurts. They have the Chicago figs. They have the hardy trees. They have those that aren't hardy. Yeah, so... Um, so the first was apple tree, second fig tree. The next one, how many people have lemon trees? Any kind of citrus trees in their yard? Come on, put it in the chat if you have a lemon tree or a citrus tree. Uh, and you can grow lemon trees in, in pots, on the patio. Uh, you can winterize them as house plants, right? Um, the Maya lemon varieties are beautiful, yes. Make sure you put down, um, I have five babies. Mm -hmm. Lemons, I have about eight citrus. Woo, apple fig and citrus. Woo, gee mama, you're going, you're, you're good. You got three of them, three on the top ten. All right, the next one, plum trees. How many have plum trees? And, and put down the variety of plum trees because I have two plum trees. I have the purple plums and I have the golden egg plum 
Lemon Tree Indoor has lemons on it now. Three without lemons. All right, Alaska. Okay, so plum trees. How many people have plum trees in your backyard? Plum trees, plum trees. Going once, going twice, going three times. Okay, Glory, you, Glory, you have a plum tree. All right. Now, we have pear trees. How many people have pear trees in their backyards? Pear trees. And we'll add Asian pear trees with that. Want one. <laughs> Which one do you want, Cassie? <laughs> oh, they get plums in April. Santa Rosa and Golden Plum. All right, Tammy. Okay. All right. What about the pear tree? Pear trees. Pear trees. Um, uh, pear tree. Oh, I love the pear tree blooms. A uh, cow for pear. All right. Pear trees. Woo! Um, they have different types of pear. I have a Bartle pear. My pear tree is a Bartle pear tree. And then, oh, a, a Pooh bear. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Okay, so pear trees. Number six, mulberry tree. Mulberry tree. One pear tree will buy a one in April. April is the month for me. All right. What about um, Cali Homestead with Pooh bear? Oh, how are you? Hello. Welcome, welcome. What about the mulberry tree? Any of you have mulberry trees? We had a huge mulberry tree, and I didn't appreciate because I didn't know what it was. I just knew that it had these berries and that the birds loved it. The birds would just come, and it was right on the line, and it would just drop these red berries all over the, the neighbor's yard. I felt bad for the neighbor because they had to clean it up. But then they tried to eat the mulberries, and I'm like, I wonder if they were really, you know, um, edible for uh, for people, but not knowing that they were. And all this time, I had it. I finally cut down the mulberry tree, and I'm and now I miss it. Now that I really understand how great it was, I'm missing out on mulberries. Yes, mulberry, mulberry. Somebody said something about that. Yeah, my landlord has two purple and one white mulberry, and he has all has all the trees. I'm envious. Oh, wow. Yeah, the mulberry, mulberry. I found mulberries on my fence. Okay. Yeah, and then they grow really, really quickly. The birds drop mulberry trees all over the yard, and I was um, cutting them down. I have a, I think one of them is um, a male. A mulberry because I saw it saw it but it doesn't um, doesn't fruit mulberries grow wild here okay who's the yeah mulberry trees all right next the next one is cherry tree how many of you have cherry trees cherry cherries I don't have a cherry tree I've been wanting to buy um, a cherry tree cherry trees cherries we used to have a uh, crab apple tree, a crab apple tree. A cherry, yes. Cali Homestead with Pooh Bear, you have a cherry? Okay. Number eight, want one. Me too, Deborah. I want one. You have five. Ellen has a cherry too. Oh, wow. Homestead, your, your uh, neighbor, your landlord has a lot of trees there. Um, apricot tree. Apricot tree, three different varieties cherry trees here. Wow, I am. I got, I'm gonna have to look for a cherry tree because I don't have one. Apricot tree, apricots, apricots. Anyone has an apricot? I don't have an apricot. Apricot. No apricot. Yeah, one. Okay, Callie has an apricot. Okay. What about a quince tree? Quince, good for cooking. Next on my list, apricot trees, okay. What about a quince tree? Quince, you know what quince are? Quince, you have quince? Oh, Sonia, that's good, that's good. Quince tree, it's good for cooking. We have three mulberry trees, two are male and one is female. Yeah, that's what I found out, that I have a, a male one here. Um, and I, I think the, the others may be females, but I keep cutting them down because they grow so fast and they just seem, their roots just seem to take up a lot of space. Yeah. You have an apricot? Okay, Sonia. 
Quince. Quince are good for cooking. Um, I first learned about Quince from Monty Don um, in, um, in his program, and he talked about Quince. And um, it's, it seems like they're very sour, but that when you cook them, they're more like a cooking fruit. Quince. And last but not least, Mulberries grow fast and huge. Yes, they do. And tall. Yes, they do, uh, Sheree. Peach tree. How many of you have a peach tree? I got a peach tree. <laughs> How many of you have a peach tree? Peach tree, I want to make mulberry jam this year. Okay. I think that it'll taste delicious. My mother has a cherry tree. That's nice, too. Yeah, three peach. I have one. Yes, peach trees. My Georgia girl, Sandria, she has her Georgia peaches. Mm-hmm. I went to Georgia. My first time I went to Savannah, Georgia. No, Savannah. Is it Savannah? Atlanta. I went to Atlanta, Georgia, and I got a fresh peach from Atlanta, Georgia, while I was there. And I was just mesmerized with the taste of actually tasting and eating a fresh peach from the peach tree. And you know that I, I, I actually was at a convention and uh, we were at the Peach Tree Hotel. I could imagine why they called it the peach tree and that the peaches, because peaches are just so delicious. The Georgia peaches are absolutely delicious. But having my own personal peach tree is such a wonderful thing. I only eat Georgia peaches. You do? Yes. So peach tree. Um, that's definitely something to get, a peach tree. That's how I am with fresh mango and banana. Delicious. Yes. Well, you know, mangoes. My parents are from Montserrat, and so my mother had um, fruit trees in her garden, and uh, we would pick the mangoes straight off the mango tree. There's nothing like that. And uh, during the mango season, her, her fridge would be so filled with mangoes. Um, and one time I went down there, I ate so much mangoes that I ended up, <laughs> um, I ended up um, catching a rash from it because it was just so much citrus in my system. I've never heard about a quince tree. Yeah, quince, yes. It's uh, Q-U-I-N-C-E, the quince tree. Quince, quince. Yeah. Um, so mangoes are just wonderful. Um, I love mangoes and um, just, what was the other one? Okay. My daughter lived in Georgia and she's, she's to bring me fresh peaches. Oh, that's good, Deborah. Yeah, and then the bananas and, um, oh, the other thing that my, I loved with my mother's garden, she had papayas. I loved papaya. Oh my goodness, I love papaya. I love buying papaya. Um, and eating a fresh papayas from her tree. Uh, it was just a wonderful, wonderful thing. Yeah, so these are the 10 best fruit trees to grow for new beginners and to have in your garden. Um, and it's good, to, it's long-term, mango season is near, I can't wait, yeah. Oh, when I was in Montserrat with the mangoes, my father took me down by the riverbed and there, um, uh, this was called Cars Bay. It was like a mango grove. I think that the mangoes, you know, people would uh, eat their mangoes and drop the seeds over there. And it just developed over time a mango grove. And it was amazing the size of the mango. I've never seen a, a mango so large. This, the mango was about like this big and he put it in a pail. And we gathered the mangoes because he never knew, he didn't even know of the mango grove at the time when my father um, was, the, my father since passed, but that was one of the experiences that I remember um, of the both of us walking down by the riverbed and discovering this mango grove. It was like out of Jurassic Park or something because the mangoes were just so beautiful and they were just hanging from the tree and then the ocean it was such a wonderful thing, Sheree. And then we ate the, I took it back. I said, Mom, see this beautiful mango? And she was like, she was um, amazed at the, the mango. And um, we, we just 
you know, it's just a beautiful thing. It was just a beautiful thing. What a great memory. But anyway, I'm running out of time now. And uh, so I am going to bid you all goodbye. But thank you so much. Thank you for Shireen for sending your friends over here to join us here at Catherine's Garden and Home. We meet every Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's 5.30 p.m. on Wednesdays here at a Catherine's Garden and Home where we grow, 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 grow together in Catherine's Garden and Home. That's right. Grow, 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 grow together in Catherine's Garden and Home. That's my little jingle. <laughs> I made it up with you all. They can come over. And um, I just started, you know, I was just feeling so happy out in the garden. And I started uh, singing this jingle that I made up. Uh, so it is our theme song here. Catherine's Garden and Home, that's right. Grow, 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 grow together. Catherine's Garden and Home, uh-huh. Grow, 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 grow together. Catherine's Garden and Home, that's right. Grow, 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 grow together. Catherine's Garden and Home. Yeah, it's catchy. I think Deborah says she sings it when she's in the garden. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You inspire me all the time, Captain. Thank you, Simple Flying with Ebony. So glad that you all have come. Thank you for the thumbs up. Thank you. I told you that you'd sing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and I just love you all. Thank you so much for coming. I just, I just get so much joy. And I hope that you have joy, too. If you're feeling down, and you are feeling, you know, a little um, apprehensive about your gardens, don't. Just enjoy it. Uh, we grow together here, Audrey Willis. Yes, we do. We grow together. Grow, 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 grow together. And I say, I am your cheerleader. Go, go, go. I am your cheerleader. And we just enjoy one another. And we get plenty of laughs. Is Rachel there? Rachel keeps us laughing and keeps us happy. So, and we all, thank you, Sonia. Um, thank you for moderating. Thank you, um, Rachel, for moderating. Thank you, Sheree, for, Sheree, I keep, Sheree. My, my niece's name is Sheree, so that's why it, I keep switching back and forth. But I know it's Sheree. Thank you for bringing your friends over. Thank you for coming and joining us. Nino and Lou love you and your jingle. Thank you, sweetness. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I love your food. Everybody, make sure you go and visit them because they cook some really good uh, food. I think they're from Jamaica. Yes. And uh, really enjoy it. Mr. Alaska, thank you for coming. Hoodstead, I hate to call names because I don't want to miss anybody. But thank you, G-Mama. Um, uh, Gardens are me, all of my buddies and friends. Thank you, Cassie, for listening while you're working. Listen while you work. Ooh, 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 ooh. Blessings, everyone, and enjoy your evening. Thank you so much. And um, see you next time. I hope you learned something from best fruit of, of the best fruit trees to grow. And I hope it inspires you to try something new and something different. And hopefully next time you'll let me know if you, uh, if you did um, take that plunge and buy that fruit tree for the future. Think about fruit trees as a generational thing, something for the future. So let's say good night to everybody. G Mama Grows. Bye, sweetness. Thank you for coming. Thank you all. Yes. Come on. Come on. Give me a clap. Yay, a smiley face, something. Yay, woo, good night, people. Sweet dreams. I bless you all. Have a blessed week. I bless you. May you give all that you need, that all of your needs are met, and that you're full of joy, that you have sweet dreams. Yes, and that you are living in shalom peace. Yes? Peace, peace, peace in the garden. Joy, joy, joy in the garden. All of that I wish you all. 
the hoodstead. Yes, all of that. I wish you all. Yes, have a wonderful, wonderful uh, evening and have a great week. Yeah, thank you, Brampton Gardeners. Simplified with Ebony. Gardens are me. Amen. Yes, Beverly. Woo, 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 woo. Yes, have a great day. And share. I am trying to get my 2,000. It's time for me to grow. So come on, grow with me and uh, make sure that you share. Thank you for sharing, Sheree. Sheree. Oh. Thank you for sharing, Cherie. And also check out the, um, the website. Uh, Deborah also shared some pictures. So join me on my website, which is Catherine's Garden Home LWS um, and weebly.com. It's in the description. Visit the website there. We have a place where you can connect with me. And you can share your garden pictures. I'll put it on the website. That's the place where we gather. Also, um, if you want, okay, I'll check it out. We appreciate you, Soul Sister. Yes, Black's Tropical Homestead. Thank you so much. Check that out and add some new fresh pictures. Um, and um, thank you so much. Well, anyway, goodbye, everybody. Subscribe and share. Yes. Bye. See you next Wednesday, 5.30 p.m. Have a great day. Thank you so much. My heart is just full of joy and happiness. Have a good one. Bye.